Hey guys, what's up? So it appears that um, there's a, a new resurgence in chess popularity at the moment. Interesting. So, and it's brokenchess.com. Chess.com has been throwing up server errors for several days now, and right now I honestly can't I can't get a game up. Uh, let's see if we have any more luck on Lee Chess. I don't know. It's possible. We will see. But even Lee Chess seems to be struggling. What the hell is going on? I mean, yes, I know that my analytics are showing a bit of an improvement as well. Um, so we shall see. So uh, Tai Tulino rated 1863 in Lee Chess money. And we're going to play the Russo. I've played a heap of Blitz today until chess.com went down. So um, this is this is already an error. Because if I take now, if knight takes back, d5 is a fork, pawn fork. This is like the Halloween variation of the Vienna Gambit. So, can't do anything about it. Okay, so let me show you then, is it instantly resigned? There we go. So let's go over to a, um, where is it, tools? We'll go to analysis board, okay. So we'll look at we'll look at what we just saw, okay? So what we just saw after flip the board. Right? So this is what we just got. This is normal king's pawn opening and the Italian game and pawn to f5. This is the Russo gambit declined with knight to here, okay? And here's the problem. This knight can't capture on there because of this this fork Okay, so that's that's one way of getting into it. If we go all the way back to the start now, and I'm gonna flip the board again, we'll look at it from the Vienna perspective. Same thing, right? So we've got e4, e5, knight out here, knight here. Okay, now in the other game, we had the opposite knights, with the regular knight pattern coming out, okay? And then the Vienna gambit, and then declined. So the, this is exactly the same kind of pattern. Um, of course, this knight isn't out. But yeah, if they decline it with this again, hang on. No, it's not. It's 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 a different it's a different thing entirely. So again, if, yeah, if they take this is the Halloween. This is the Halloween pattern. Okay, so it's it's not it's not the same thing. Uh, you can get it, for example. Um, yeah, it's basically it's like it's basically like from the four knights. So um, Italian four knights. We attack here. No. So what you do here, that's it. You can take this pawn, and if they take, there you can capture again. So it's just it's just a pattern really worth looking out for. So it, yeah, it's not quite. The Halloween, the Halloween gambit, uh, out of interest, flip again, is comes from the regular four knights. So you might play knight c3, knight f6, and then is it d4 straight away? No, it's the knight sack on here. This is it. This is the regular Halloween gambit. Now the point is here, white is actually giving up a whole piece. White's given up a whole knight there in return for this kind of tempo gaining move and pretty much wherever the knight goes again you, you're going to push e5 so let's say knight goes back here you push again but here white is down um, a piece for, for a pawn um, but they do have a strong center and again they have tempo here so it's it's a risky gambit but the 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 tamer versions where you don't give up a whole piece I think are much nicer so there you go. Let's try and get another game. Let's try and get another uh, another fifteen ten. See what happens. It's weird, isn't it? Really interesting. The, the more that you, the more you play, the more these same patterns seem to come up. Okay, we've got the white pieces now. B L N T Z seventy four. We have a youngster. And what are we going to play? Let's just play something else. Let's not play the Vienna. 
Let's play Three Nights. I don't know what's going on. We'll just play it by ear. Have fun. This is Lee Chess. Okay, and we have the Four Knights, and this is now the Four Knights Scotch. Okay, so if only these two knights were out and, and, and not these two guys, then this would be the Scotch, the Scotch opening, which is very fine indeed. And here, I do not know what we're doing, but okay, they take. I guess I can, I can take here. I know Naroditsky's been um, promoting the Four Knights Scotch on his recent or a recent speed run. Uh, do we go in? I really don't know. If I take with a knight, takes, takes is fine. I think, is that a mistake? I believe. I might like to get my bishop out as well, kind of hacksaw so gambit style. And, okay. This hits the queen. It really has to recapture with B. I know there's just something telling me that this this opening is full of little cheeky cheeky traps. Um, but I'm playing it by ear, so I don't know. If takes here, we trade queens, he loses castling rights, and, and we're good. Okay, so now black has the three pawn islands. Yeah. Um, I can actually push e5 with tempo if I want. Black really wants to get castled and try and consolidate. He does have a slight development lead. Is this worth doing? Or this, and then hit the piece. Let's develop the bishop, then hit the pinned piece. So if he castles now, surely he's going to lose material. Perhaps the Four Knights Scotch would be an interesting way to go. I don't know. But then you're going to have to put up, put up with me doing a ghastly Scottish accent for uh, weeks and weeks. We could branch out into something else, couldn't we, chaps? We could do something. Okay. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> so opponent here has pinned the pawn so the pawn can't take the knight. All we need to do is break the pin. So bishop e2. And the knight still can't move, or else the queen falls. And the knight can't move with check. Because notice the knight's here. It's just too far away from the king. It's on the right colour square. If he was here, he could move with check. Oh, he's taken out the pawn. Clever. Oh, we like this. We do. All right. Um, I'm thinking castles makes sense, but uh, actually our bishop hangs. So should I just retreat the bishop? Or, or play queen d2, defend the bishop. He's not going to trade it for a rook, is he? That then gives me the option of castling either way. The knight is still pinned as well. So keep a pin if you can. I really don't want to cash in this pin. I don't really want to take the knight and invite the queen out into the board for free. Then, you know, instead of having two pieces, well, one piece each out on the board, I've got none in this particular little cluster here, and black has one. So, what else do we have? I think castles looks kind of, long castles looks interesting. Short castles is fine as well. Um, there is going to be a weakness here with the, the triple pawn islands, and they doubled pawns on the C file. Here is, this is, now he's got rook takes here. It's Long Castle, just for giggles. Let's see what happens. Queen still defends that. F4 is maybe playable. Hit the Rook. Annoy the Rook. Looks like a fine move to me. Bit Been a bit dopey today. Definitely not back up to my kind of 1600 level mental performance. Oh, 
I like the look of F4. I like, I like just like, you know, the idea of launching a opposite side castle pawn storm attack, get the pawns up there. I'm inclined just to drop back, maintain the pin. The threat is worse than the execution. F4. Really will get under that rook's skin. Upset the rook if we can. So what's 18, 1800? Okay, here we go. So this really is some something of a concession from Black here. He's moved now two of the three pawns in front of his king. And for what? I can't take here because he's got two defenders. I could just drop back. I mean, this is a very natural looking thing. Drop back, hit the rook. Rook's going to have to retreat back up the board, I think. Can't go here because of knight, can't go here because of pawn, can't go here because of knight and queen. And here, I don't know, I'd be very nervous about that. I've got bishop here or here. Yeah, that, that, would, that would be uh, very bad. <clears throat> so I think, yeah, he's going to have to, he's going to have to run away now. And now what I want to be thinking about is how I'm going to infiltrate now that Black has really made some space around the king here. It might be good, actually. I might go over some of uh, Daniel Naroditsky's old speedrun videos and, and check out the, like, the... Uh... Sorry, but what the fuck is that? I take the knight. Pawn can't recapture because I win the queen. What? No. That's just every kind of wrong. Okay. Okay, so pawn can't recapture, but rook, rook can recapture. Okay, okay, interesting. Now, <clears throat> undefended. That's defended only by that. That's undefended. Okay, so do, what colours do we have? Red. Okay, that's defended twice. This this guy's fine. He's clear. This is defended only by the king. Okay. I mean, I can I can just start some annoyance tactics. This looks nice as well. H four looks nice. Go for a bit of that. I also like the look of this, maybe targeting the f7, pawn a. Got nice angle there on the dark squares for the old queen. <sighs> My wife's plugged an air freshener in somewhere and it stinks. And I don't like it. Okay, I'm going to take. Not going to think too hard. If bishop takes... I can block here. Um, if takes, takes. This is all good. See, this pawn will then hang. Queen will be looking at it. Opening up space around here. It's really not what black wants right now. See, 1800 is maybe like 1500 uh, in chess.com money, I think. Someone made a page of it. Let's have a look. Um, compare... Lee Chess, chess.com ratings. Yeah, someone did a, like a big analysis when they. on chessgoals.com. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, so what have we got? Chess.com. Blitz Rapid. Lee Chess Rapid. No thanks. Lee Chess Rapid versus. Where, how do you compare chess.com rapid? And Lee Chess Rapid. Lee Chess Rating versus Chess.com. We'll go, we'll go on Blitz score. I don't go very high, does it? That's the problem. Where's the 1800? Lee Chess Rapid 1775. Well, that's not very. I don't. I don't. 
really understand this. Chess.com Blitz 1250 is Chess.com Blitz 1430. Chess.com Blitz. Okay. So 1430 is around 1770 in, well, whatever, I don't know. I don't bloody know, don't make any sense to me. No one tells me nothing. Right. <clears throat> anyway, back to the game. We're in the business of trying to humiliate our opponent. I am noticing that king and queen are in line here. Um, there is a hanging pawn. I think it would be rude not to accept it because then we've got rook d h1 we've got rook h8 skewer wins the queen and i think i'm liking the four knight scotch we could even do it if, if we want at the end of this game we can do a bit of study together i don't know if i have a four knight scotch um study yet Um, Steinitz a five scotch, anti scotch, all the gambits I know, anti scotch, four night scotch. Okay. Okay, so we've I've made a start on it. I've made a start on it. We can have a look. Uh, now what? Rook d h one. Oh, bishop's guarding that square actually. Here. Let's do rook d h one and then. Bishop h4, force the bishop off the board, trade down, then we can get a rook in there. Have I blundered the uh, bishop here? I have a little bit, haven't I? Okay. Well, that was foolish. Let's drop back. So I'm a piece down now. Well, that was silly. That's what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing for the last couple of days. Playing some really good chess and then just eating my own foot without warning. However, yeah, opponent has two bishops. We only have one. But... opponent has a very exposed king. It's definitely a tricky position now. And no mistake, this rook is very well defended. Just been playing a little bit cavalier. That's the problem. Not worried about queen coming here or rook coming here, they just get snatched away. Also, this bishop's now undefended. And if I get this in, if that bishop's off the board, he could lose, find himself losing rooks. All right, um, here. And the threat is that, so... Thinking that. He's got a check here, I can just even... Also notice, um, yeah, Bishop has to defend that Rook. Here. If I can even come there, I'm probably just A1. Yeah, it's, so it's um, <clears throat> just rewinding back to the beginning. That pawn fork is not a Halloween variety. Notice we are actually attacking the queen as well. I have to remember these things. So I'm expecting something like bishop there. Then I move away. But then I'm attacking the queen, also attacking this bishop. Yeah, if the bishop moves away, it's got bishop's got to defend h8 as well. It's a lot of moving parts. A lot of wither twos and y fours. 
Yeah, so it's not a Halloween kind of thing. Oh, okay. Well, as you say, as you wish. Queen takes here, I come here. Queen takes there, checkmate. Well, the only, <laughs> the only move is that. That was a good finish. Well done. Well done on that. Very good. Do another quick one while we chat. See if we can get another. Oh, we've got the wrong side of the board now, so we're going back to going back to the Freddy Krueger repertoire, and we have another Russo Gambit. Very dependable at, at the intermediate level. You get a lot more Spanish games than Italian as you as you get stronger. I've I've noticed more people playing the Roy Lopez, you know, to over the 1600 mark. Seems to be where the, where it flips. Opponent doesn't really know what to do here. But he's rated 1929 though, that's a respectable score. That was a good finish though by my opponent, very well done. Good rook sack. A rook sack where I come from is what you put your tent in when you go to a festival. Okay, and again, the same problem. Yeah, this kind of lazy conservative thinking Look, if I just get my knights out of their natural squares, maybe not from a rook square, but then what can possibly go wrong? Well, it can. This is the problem. You have to be careful. And this is one of the reasons why I think I've, I've been having some success recently and been steadily over 1,500 in both Blitz and Rapid. And it's down to knowing my slightly offbeat left field openings more than my opponents are knowing them. See, I have wondered what's been going on with chess.com a bit in the last few days. Don't, don't know. I've had a lot of 503 server errors. So any 500 error basically means the server's broken in, in some way. Now he's having to think. He's seen this. He's clearly seen it. What are you going to do? He's got a knight on prees. This is a problem. Okay, well this is a... Um, this is a known thing. There and queen can't recapture, because then I just win a second piece, right? Or if I take this, the knight escapes. So I think, if, hang on, if I take this, the yeah, bishop escapes. So I think we take the knight, and what we're doing here is the threatening a con continuation capture on g2, which would be very unpleasant. And they then have to go back to here. Okay, so I think we take, do we take anyway? Do we? Takes, bishop takes, queen g5, hit the bishop. This guy might come out. Got to watch out for the d-pawn moving, with the discovery on the queen. Maybe get this bishop out, something like this. I mean, you're going to take that with the bishop, obviously, aren't you? You're not pondering this. Because I've got then g6 and you can't take on there. Okay, I'm thinking queen to here. It's just... Queen f6 is one of those general all-purpose tie things together moves in these kinds of positions. And I think my plan is to get the bishop out to one of these squares, push d6, get my bishop, get castled. Opponent has an uncomfortable isolated pawn on the king's bishop's pawn. 
And the square that used to be known as KB2, King's Bishop 2. Now F2. Okay. Notice he's already also looking at this, so I'm going to come back here, I think. And I'm not attacking the knight, it's defended by that bish here. So, even you know, like bishop b7 short castles, nothing wrong with that. I've got this as well, that actually threatens to come back round and grab the knight. Also threatens c2, it's not a bad thing. B takes, queen takes, and I've got a pinned pawn here. This is my kind of default idea. It's good to have a default idea, but it's not good to play it automatically without paying attention to what your opponent does. Right now, I've got seven pawns. He's only got six, but it, the other issue is these two are both isolated, which ain't the happiest situation to be in. This is even a thought. Get my queen and knight looking at c2. But I think I, I'd, I'd prefer if my queen wasn't here. Because I want to get this bishop out. I want to push d6. I want to, you know, just do all this normally. Um, the opponent's enjoying having a very good think here. Apologies, my front door's very loud. Right then, what are you going to do, mate? What are you going to do? I mean, White's main problem is how the hell am I going to get my king safe? So he's going to be thinking about where am I going to. Yeah, how am I going to get my bishop out on the board? So he's got two choices. He's got either move the d pawn or move the b pawn and fianchetto. This pawn is relatively well defended. And he's got to get the queen out into the board. Could find himself walking into knight d4, guarding these two squares. Well, well, well. Okay. So it looks like he's made up his mind that the bishop's coming out in this direction. I could push h6. However, I think, hmm, so one thought is this, I mean he could then remove, which is not a problem, not a problem for me, um, he wants to play the bishop out, I don't think it's going to go there, but it might, or it might go here. That will also tie his queen in a little bit. The queen probably wants to prefer this square there, but then his bishop can't put any more pressure on there. These two moves are also interesting. I think that's absolutely fine. Uh, I really want to get my bishop out. And you know, another option for me is also the Fianchetto. I could put my bishop on, on there on b7. Um, kind of pinning this guy as well, maybe. It's going to be the quickest way to castle. One, two, three. And then I don't have to make a decision. I don't really want to put my bishop there. You know, you have to say to yourself, well, where's a good square for that bishop? And e7 isn't it. So you don't want to make multiple moves if you can. So, okay, there we go, Fianchetto. That's what we're going to do. Get the bishop saved, get castled, and then we'll crack on. Opponent's a little way off. He's not going to put his bishop there in a hurry, because I just kick it. He can't go here. This would be a bit of a wishy-washy square for the bishop. But bringing the knight in here and making me put my queen here to defend c7, that was that was a decent move. That was a decent move. I 
Okay, well, we've had this conversation. I can kick the bishop. And I'm going to... Not going to think too hard about that. The bishop comes in, by the way. I can't take with the queen, because the queen's got an important job defending c7. But I can take with the knight, I can take with the bishop. Bishop goes here. I think g5 looks very reasonable. Um, yeah, because the, th the problem is the bishop's still looking at d8, and that prevents me castling, so... Bishop's going to be forced. Oops, forced here. Oh! Oh, fancy. I have to go here, don't I, really? Now, Bishop takes, takes, I lose a rook. Wow, look at that. Now, I, I do gain a knight, but then I, I abandon the defense of that. That was, that was some good play. I'm getting out thunk here. Okay, so I'm down in exchange at this point. Could put back here, but the knight can come there with check. Oh, man. Okay, let's try and. Oh, I can't do that. Because queen takes that, I get mated. Okay. Whoa. The double kick was not in my interest there. But in fact, was even this? There, and actually he's got a, a royal fork, family fork. Wow. Good play. Very good play. Okay, what threats do we have? Anything good? Knight here, threaten this. Knight here, he just castles, does he? I can come in with check. <sighs> Finding some good opposition on Leeches today. But it's also just showing up that, you know, I, I'm a little bit shabbier than my normal self and a, bit, a little bit cavalier and casual, has to be said. On there, try and get the bishop. That's that quite a reasonable bishop. This. If White gets the castle, which he can simply do now, then uh, it's not looking all that clever for me. I'm gonna kick the knight away and stuck my king on c7. Maybe. Where's the knight gonna go? Could go there. Not really doing much. There, there. Maybe bishop here. It's not fantastic. Bishop there defending the rook. But that's why my opponent's 100 points higher rated than me as well. I think he's just going to castle. Yeah, if I take the knight, that's actually checkmate. I think bishop here, I'm going to push this, kick the knight away, get, tuck my king into c7 square, and then my defended rook is then a threat to the queen. I can, I've got this, for example, lined up with the king as well. So c7, c6, king c7, bishop h6 is my... I just, I really, really just didn't think, what is my opponent doing here? Yeah, I said to myself, oh, I can just kick it. And then that's it, stop thinking. I didn't need to stop thinking there. Maybe knight here might have been fine. I'm actually a pawn up at this point. So knight there might have been a good move. Even if we have some trading, I can still castle. You know, leave my opponent with a pawn down. He's got this missing G pawn and these isolated pawns. But as it is, very, very good sequence there. All right, so that's my 
idea. I need to remember that my opponent is not dumb. Also noticing that if this knight moves, my bishop on b7 is actually hanging. Fortunately, the knight can't move with a major threat because my king and queen are on dark squares. When the knight moves, it's going to move to a dark square where it's only looking at light squares. And in fact, I'm now threatening to overwhelm the knight myself. So wherever the knight goes, I could actually just snatch the bishop and attack the rook. Which maybe make it look like I've just played a better move than I did, but I didn't realise it. Anywho. So for example, anything like that, I just snatched the bishop. I really don't, I don't know why more people don't play the scotch. Read in a comment recently that the Vienna is maybe fading out of fashion a little bit. Um, because Levy stopped promoting it as much, I don't know, but we shall see. There's a lot of great openings out there. Yeah, so my default now is just win the knight, really. And if the knight should move, win the bishop. Okay, so what are you thinking now? There, he takes, queen takes. Takes, if the queen takes, I've undefended this bishop. And that is not good. So, how about this then? c7, knight moves away, get the king safe. <clears throat> yeah, so actually winning the knight was not really an option because my queen is overworked. She can't capture, well, can't recapture here and continue to defend that. And we know that this is a, a serious problem. Okay, so assuming the knight moves away, I can get to play king c7. If the knight does not move away, I just capture the knight and we're okay. Okay, so this pretty much, I think, forces trade of material, but I do have the option of this. Then knight takes, bishop, queen takes. Now let's just do this, I think. Knight takes back. This pawn is undefended. So do I need to defend this pawn and then put, play king c7? Or bishop g7, x-ray defending the pawn. Bishop g7, he's got no easy way to defend the knight. Knight is going to move back to there. Then I have to push that anyway. So I'm thinking this. <sighs> Opponent's spending a lot more time thinking than I am, and it shows. Still down in exchange. I do have the bishop pair, but the opponent has the rook pair, which is better. Having said that, bishop pairs not to be sniffed at either. Okay, I've got a few places to go. Was Kind of expecting that move, or a variation. This looks good to me. I'm going to go there. King c7, or, or d7, but I can't play d7 immediately. Or even here, actually. I could kick the knight away. Then knight just comes there. Push up in the center. White has five minutes to find a way to checkmate me. Plus the increment.
Now his weakness still is these queenside pawns. So really, what I th need to be thinking about is um, hmm. takes takes my. In fact, if takes my my knight hangs, so that's no good. So I'm going to go in here. Annoy the bishop. It's a nice outpost, actually. Also, th with a kind of threat of this. Maybe ideas. Still king c7. If I take... Rook takes here. Also this, actually. Knight and Rook are, will be in line together. But pawn takes is horrible. It gives white four pawn islands and three solitary isolated. What? Oh, missed that. Okay, well, he can trade rooks. He can't take the bishop, but he can trade off the rooks. Totally missed that. I have a check. This is a good knight, though. Also notice that... Oh, surely that was just... Did you rush that? What happened there? He just walked into a knight fork. I'm just praising how sexy my knight is. Yeah, on an outpost, this pawn can't disturb it. This pawn can't disturb it. There's no pawns that can disturb it. Because there's no pawn on G or E. And you've just gone and walked straight into... That and now, 5-5, five, five. now black is slightly better. My instinct is this, definitely. Uh, maybe not definitely, maybe that was actually a bit sillier than, oh, you bloody Muppet. You silly Muppet-faced Muppet. Well, there we go. We got the advantage back in the game, but only momentarily. You womble. Anyway, so that was the uh, me having fun with the bishop pair for all of about one move. Should have been in a good position. I'm now a full piece down. Pawns are equal. With four minutes on the clock and an increment, you can safely resign there. But all good fun. All good fun. Well, well played to my opponent. Um, hope chess.com manages to uh, rig up some more server power. I don't know what they use for their servers. I don't know if they have their own servers or if they use Amazon or something like that. I would, I would hope they do, which gives them the ability to expand and bring you instances online quite easily but hey ho anyway good game good game hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching see you soon